Marcus and Phalaris serve as a hefty wall that many players cannot climb in Power World. Phalaris is a relentless and brutal pal to contend with that renders your melee focused pals almost completely useless with his airborne combat, meaning you will have to adapt. Fortunately, with a few tips and tricks, we'll actually be able to put Marcus and Phalaris down easily. Let's start with looking at what Phalaris can do. Now, you may be tempted to bring a team full of water types for this fight, since Phalaris is fire type, and therefore will take much more damage from water, but that would be a mistake, since Phalaris is equipped not only with fire, but with lightning attacks as well to counter his weakness. His fire attacks include fast moving projectiles and scatter shots that can cause surprising chunks of damage and build up the chance of applying burning to you and your pals. You can dodge these basic attacks or use the pillars for cover here. If you're too far away, then Phalaris will use a special, unique variation of the Fire Tornado ability that follows up with him swooping forward for absolutely massive damage. He doesn't necessarily follow the same route as the Tornadoes if you are moving, so you will have to sprint out of their path and then dodge the swoop at the last moment to avoid the damage. I like to get behind a pillar here since he will swoop into that instead and be still for a moment, opening him up for an easy attack from your pal. If you stay too close for too long, then Phalaris may opt to use the Fire Breath that you will probably have seen a fair bit so far. It deals a lot of damage and causes burning fast, but is easily avoided by just creating some distance or running sideways. Occasionally, Phalaris will start channeling a Fireball for a few seconds. This is by far his deadliest attack that will deal colossal damage up front and then further damage over time. You have a few seconds to react when he starts casting this, but be warned, it has some tracking on it and is difficult to dodge, so I strongly recommend staying close to a pillar so that you can jump behind it for this attack. You may get a red circle under your feet, indicating that a moment later a small explosion will erupt below you, dealing hefty damage. Fortunately, you get ample time to dodge out of the way for this one. Phalaris can cast Ignis Rage, which creates many glowing magma spots on the floor that after a few seconds will explode from massive damage. This will be particularly bad for any larger pals, since they can be hit by several of these spots at once. Fortunately, you get lots of time to get clear of the blast zone. That's Phalaris' fire attack, so now let's look at his lightning attacks, which are designed to devastate your water pals. You've faced all of these attacks already with Orserk, so they won't be anything new. The first is his standard tri-lightning. For a moment, there will be a bright glow below you, and then a lightning bolt will strike that spot. This will happen three times in short succession, and it is easy to avoid by simply staying mobile. Next is a massive lightning strike that will blast a very wide area, with Phalaris serving as the epicenter. You need to get outside of the red circle to avoid this or you will take a massive amount of damage, and remember to withdraw your pal too, even if they aren't water type. Finally, we have the absolutely devastating lightning barrage. Phalaris will get a glow beneath him and charge for a few seconds before unleashing this attack at you. It is both highly damaging and difficult to avoid, going through pillars and wrecking huge chunks of your health and shield. If this is aimed at your pal, it's important that you pull them back. The only way to avoid this is to start manically dodging sidewards as soon as the attack fires. Now that we've covered everything that Phalaris can do, let's cover what you can do. My absolute strongest recommendation here is not to bring any water types. Instead, be smart. Bring your strongest fire type. This might seem dumb, but it will make sense in just a minute. There are some awesome fire types in this game. Blaze Howl, Jormantide Ignis, and in my case, Blazemoot. These will take very limited damage from any of Phalaris' fire attacks, and will only take neutral damage from the lightning attacks. Now, instead of trying to fight fire with fire, you can still fight it with water. Find some good water type skill fruits, feed them to your fire type, and slot them in as its attacks. And that means you now have a defensive powerhouse that can still hit Phalaris with hefty bonus damage. That right there is an excellent combination that will already make a huge difference in this fight. That's not all you'll need though, even a super strong fire type kitted out with water moves will eventually get tired in this fight. And you can't use any melee attacks. You'll want to deal some damage yourself, and to do that effectively you need to get close so you can hit the weak spots. That's Phalaris' head and Marcus himself riding on Phalaris' back. To do that, you will need to fly. Get your strongest flyer and get up there with Phalaris so that you can bring the pain yourself. There are some great options here. Vanworm is a fire type that will therefore be able to take some hits, and the same goes for Ragnarok. If you can get your hands on your very own Phalaris, then that's ideal. But for this fight, I brought Shadowbeak, mostly because he was my fastest option, and Divine Disaster deals absolutely crazy damage, even neutrally. 
you'll need to bring some muscle so that you can actually deal the damage you want. I farmed the Suzaku Alpha Boss in the desert south of Marcus's Tower for the legendary pump shotgun schematic, which I brought to this fight. You can also farm Blazemood in the western volcano area for the legendary assault rifle schematic, and if you're a high enough level, you can even farm Jet Dragon for the legendary missile launcher schematic. Either way, bring a strong weapon. And there you have it. Once you've got down how to avoid Flourish's attacks and got creative with how you build your pals for this fight, and as soon as you start getting up close and personal with a flying pal of your own, you'll have Flourish down in no time, and then you'll be ready to start preparing to fight the final boss of the game. If this video was helpful, then go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Take care guys, and as always, have fun.